I find this unfortunate, because amateur artists are now looking into Hart's work, even though his instructions aren't actually a useful foundation for illustration. Rather than showing how to begin a character illustration, set up a pose, and so on, Hart will just start with a pose and expect the reader to do the same. How is this helpful for a beginner that wants to learn how to create original works? It isn't. Instead, they learn how to draw the poses and illustrations that Hart has created. They've learned nothing on anatomy, abstraction, or just about anything that a fresh, naive, newbie artist needs to illustrate their own characters. His level of instruction is like that of an elementary school art teacher who has you do specific projects similar to what she's done, while not cultivating the style of the individual. So let's assume that you actually do learn something from Christopher Hart's book. Congratulations! You've learned crappy art. And while his recent works show a jump in quality, he's still not to the level where I'd want to learn from him. I was looking up Manga Mania by Chris Hart to see what people thought of it. And that's how I found that spiciest of flaming hot, crunchy Cheeto takes on Goodreads. I think it encapsulates the general feelings I've been seeing over the years about Chris Hart books. I owned this. It was probably my second how to draw manga book I've owned. I don't own it anymore, but I remember it not being very good. I'm not making fun of this commenter. I actually agreed with a lot of it in that essay they wrote. But honestly, a lot of Chris Hart's books weren't the best and did not age well. But why did they look the way they did? In an interview with Jazza, he explains his approach for drawing manga and these books. I recommend listening to it. A lot of books on anime and manga, do you find there's something of a process to be able to go between them? or Because they're quite different and they must mm -hmm. be different approaches. How do you find your experience with that? They are, and they have different sensibilities, and you have to respect each of them. I think it's trying not to impose preconceived notions of cartoons onto manga. I think, well, you know, it's all, it's all the same stuff. It's just a little different style. Yes, it's a very different style. It's not all the same stuff. There, are, it's, it's like there's a, a sweet spot with each of them. Yeah. For instance, I, I, on a book on drawing cartoons. I might do something with the, the line of action, I might do stuff with certain animated techniques like uh, drag and flow and wash and stretch. There's not as much of that in, in mangas. So instead of that, uh, I might concentrate on uh, character design and style, shadow, um, mood, uh, and you know. It's so I let the, the genre dictate the book rather than my try to put something into it just because it might be a neat technique or principle. But did those books get better since the early days? While the art is way better in more recent books, it still goes by the step-by-step -step model. I own one right here. Caution, this book is for adults. Like his earlier books, he has contributing artists. He got people like Arrow Pinku or Tabby-chan who are awesome, but this makes me think, how much of this book or his other manga books are his drawings anymore? Outside of manga books, his other books about cartooning or comic anatomy gets a lot of praise. I love his toonie stuff, but the manga I just can't. I'm too weeaboo, damn it! Midlife artists here on YouTube reviewed some of his other books that are not the manga ones, and they give a good look at them. But the one thing for sure that is good is that he had an impact on young artists since the 2000s. Even big art YouTubers like Lavender Town and Jazza talked about his books. It's easy to take pot shots at Chris Hart books. And I have. I am not free from sin. But these little step-by-step -step books get a lot of kids started. They're literally made for kids. The book I have have tiny tips along with the step-by-step -step, draw a circle, draw the rest of the fucking owl stuff. But I would mostly put this in the reference pile for drawing cute outfits. I just wish it had more, but that's why you should have a swipe file filled with cute fashion and poses that you can always go to. 
In the end, while I don't like the earlier stuff, while I don't like that the artists that have heavily contributed to his later books just aren't as big as him, when they should be, even though they're credited in the books. Wait, how much of this book did he draw again? How much of the art in this book is his? Even if his cartooning and other art subjects are fine, but with the how to draw manga books, is this fine? Is slapping his name on a book that wasn't fully drawn by him okay? It's almost like his name is just put there for branding, rather than just, you know, picking up a book that was created by someone who wasn't great at manga and then became good at it. I honestly thought that, holy crap, he became really good at it after those first, like, few books and no, it's just someone else. It's not even an inspiring story. There's also a Mon Wa mania? What? <laughs> but counterpoint, some artists are getting paid, so get that money, bitches! <laughs> Christopher Hart has a hate-dom as much as he has a fandom, and I've read a lot of critiques about his books and his demeanor. On one hand, he did inspire so many to pick up a pencil, and made these easy-to-follow step-by-step instructions for kids who might be too young to fully grasp the traditional way. But yeah, that's good, but then that makes these books not really suitable for anyone older. He has a YouTube channel where you can see him draw, and watching it made me realize the biggest flaw with his manga series, especially in the early years. He's brought the knowledge of Western cartooning to manga art in a way that doesn't mesh with it. Instead of study and adaptation, it's like he just jumped into it without thinking about why the styles look different, even though some of the process is the same. It's the details like line weights, coloring, not having a purple porcupine as a hat. To put it in a cartoon fan perspective, it's like seeing Avatar The Last Airbender and how awesome it looks, and then finding out, oh, this is an anime. It was made over here? Cool. And then you watch the first Teen Titans cartoon that is very anime influenced with the eyes and the hair highlights, and it's okay, I know it's from here, it looks kind of weird, but it's still good. And then you watch some lunatics unleash, and then you want to go to Burbank, set it on fire, rename it Burn and Bake, as revenge for their crimes against the anime aesthetic. Oh God, all this mid-2000s anime cartoon style talk is turning me into a mid-2000s style angry critic. It's fine. I'm fine. Fine. This is not fine! This is not fine! Oh God, why? I thought this was a meme someone made about how to draw manga books. I didn't know it was real. Why is she melting? Why? Imagine this being the last thing you saw before death. I only found this because it came up during another binge of nostalgia people were having on Twitter for this particular book. 